hi guys um i'm back with another video and this was the video i promised you yesterday that i was going to upload today i didn't say when but at least i'm uploading it today right i did promise so here's the video um so basically in this video i'm going to talk about things that you should know before going to clinical or your first day of clinical or you know knowledge that you should take with you or something like that it's going to be pretty quick and pretty basic because honestly there's a lot you should know and there's a lot you probably know by now if you're going to clinical so everything you've learned throughout this semester keep it with you and take it to your clinical site <laughs> okay so um Basically, um, I was asked which of my classes were, um, which of my classes came in handy at, um, while I was at clinical. Um, basically, all of them came in handy. I'm not going to lie, all of them. So as you all know, I took three RT classes this semester, um, intro to respiratory therapy, um, pulmonary A&P cardiopulmonary AMP and my clinical lab class and all of them came in handy but the class that I was most surprised I was like really shocked that came in handy like we used all the material that we taught and we learned in that class was my clinical lab class and that is a class that basically we don't really stress over it's like it's an easy class basically it's a hands-on class you know everything we learned in the lab we basically did at at the clinical site so um, I was shocked because my class we really didn't take that class serious we were so stressed out about our intro class and our cardiopulmonary AMP class that we kind of just like Kind of didn't really care about that class that much but I remember one day the professor in that class was upset with us because we were so busy talking about our other classes and the exams we had coming up we weren't really paying attention to what he was saying and he was furious he told us that he understand about all the work we have going on in the other classes but his class is important too and basically everything we're learning in his class we're going to do when we get to our clinical site and he was absolutely correct so um i said all that to say pay attention in your clinical lab class because everything you're learning in there you're going to use at the clinical site so um things that you should probably know before you get to clinical um, if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking down at my phone. I wrote some stuff down, and I don't want to forget anything, so excuse me. So make sure you know your aerosol mask, your partial rebreather mask, your non-rebreather mask, your nasal cannula, your um, trach mask, your T-piece, your face tint, your Venturi mask, ABGs. Know your ABGs. I cannot stress this enough okay know your ABGs and know how to do them in like literally 30 seconds that's what we've been learning well we learned that last semester how to do ABGs but now our professor is like basically putting pressure on us to know how to do them in like 30 seconds or less do it in your head like that boom boom quick ready to go move on to the next thing um, Know your um, nasal cannula oxygen percentage. Um, know your air to oxygen ratios. Um, know how to count breath sounds, of course, and respiratory rates. Um, know the definitions of bradycardia, tachycardia, tachypnea, bradypnea, systolic pressure, and diastolic pressure, etc., etc., stuff like that. Um, know your breath sounds, you guys. Know your breath sounds because that will come in handy. Okay, know the sounds like crackles and wheezing and plurif 
floral friction rubs <laughs> no strider you know stuff like that etc et okay so um our professor gave us a website where we can go and listen to different breath sounds and I will put the um, link down below if you're like interested because um, that website does come in handy you can just plug in your earphones on your phone and go on the website and basically listen to different websites I mean websites Ugh. different breath sounds and what they sound like and stuff like that so um, what else should you know know your medical cylinders know the different codes know the different colors for the US and know the international colors um, no different delivery systems um, what else can you know know your different types of inhalers what the um, spirometers for and how to use it um, know what a peak flow monitor is and how to use that too um, what else should you know okay know that when you are talking to your patients at the clinical site that you introduce yourself in a social space which is I believe 4 to like 12 feet and then when you're doing interviews you do it in like a personal space which is like 2 to 4 feet so know that I guess um what else should you know basically everything you've learned know everything you've learned because especially in your clinical lab class if you guys take those because your instructor at the clinical site is going to ask you so many questions about all the um the different type of tools that you'll be using like nasal cannulas and stuff like that because I've already said that um, earlier so um, if you have any questions you guys ask your clinical instructor that's what they're there for I can honestly say that I'm really blessed to have my clinical instructor because he encourages to like ask him a lot of questions and if you have like anything you want to know ask them that's why he's there like obviously if you want to do something ask ask them if you can do something like volunteer they love stuff like that our clinical instructor like literally always encourage us to volunteer he always tell us if you want to do something ask me and if like you don't know how to do it since you're like brand new and stuff to the hospital and it's your first day well obviously it's your first day you're not going to do anything but like the second third day um he will ask you to do stuff volunteer if it's something you want to do like this is a learning process like really um if he he if you're a learning instructor whether it's a he or a she male or female like is showing something to you and you like are anxious to like do it can ask like say okay um sir or ma'am can I like do it on the next patient and our instructor if um, you're he would like literally tell you what to do step by step and just to show you and teach you like how to do stuff so ask questions you guys you know volunteer um, what else push his cart or um, her cart because <laughs> that's what we get to do that thing is so heavy like honestly but anyway so know how to um count breath sounds and breath rates and stuff like that um just be eager to learn you know like stuff like that can really make an impression on somebody especially at the site the clinical site if they see um, a student like that's eager to learn that wants to learn that's passionate about like this um, field maybe just maybe you can leave like a really good impression and they might actually hire you when you're done with school because it's happened to a lot of students at my program where they left like a really great impression 
at the hospitals that they um, um, were doing their clinicals at. And then after they were done with school and they um, passed their board exam and were licensed to like practice, they were hired immediately. So just leave a good impression. Do not use your phone at the clinical site, guys. Please don't. That does not tell well on you and you're not representing your school well, okay? So please do not use your phones at your clinical site. Don't do it. Please don't do that because one, you will get your clinical instructor mad because they'll probably think that what they're saying is not interesting to you. Like it's you're not interested in what they're saying at all. So and um, another question was how do I study? Honestly, like I've said before, I ha um, I don't really, I've never really had to study. I just look over my notes the night before. But for A and P, like how do I study for A and P and stuff like that? I'm a, like I've learned that I'm a visual learner and I like colors. So um, basically, when I was taking um, regular A and P, not cardiopulmonary A and P, I bought the coloring book that went with the textbook that we were supposed to buy for the A and P class. So I bought the color the coloring book. Ugh. I bought the coloring book and I also bought flashcards. You guys, I'm a huge fan of making flashcards. I believe flashcards can fix everything. That's just me. I'm a huge fan of making flashcards because you can literally take them everywhere and look at your notes and stuff like that. So flashcards work for me. Coloring books work for me. Um, the workbook that comes with your textbook, they work as well. Um, so basically for every textbook I have, I bought the workbook that goes with it so I can like doodle and do stuff with colored pencils and crayons. I know it sounds childish, but I've learned that this is like literally working for me. And I've also learned that writing things down works for me as well. So I've been like trying to learn different ways of studying. So I've been watching like a lot of YouTube videos on how <laughs> on how to study. And um, I've been watching a lot of nursing school videos on how to study because obviously we don't have a lot of respiratory therapy people on YouTube. So I've been watching a lot of videos on how nursing students study and I've been taking tips from them and I can say that um well we had our first exam well not exam like a quiz today on the first because today's our first day of summer school we had a quiz today and I can honestly say the tip that I got from one of the um, nursing students on YouTube about writing things down that you um you don't understand really worked because um I can't afford to get any more C's on my transcript. Like, I refuse to get any more C's on my transcript. So, while I was studying, if I understood something, I kind of highlighted it a little bit. And if I don't understand it, then I would write it down in a textbook. And honestly, I can say that has, like, really helped me because... Like on the quiz today, I did really, really well as opposed to what I was doing before, which was just going like over the book the night before. So taking your time to study and writing stuff down, color coding, making flashcards, it really works. I promise you, it really does. So basically that's it for this video you guys um I don't think I have anything else to say because I'm tired and I'm about to go to bed so I hope like these tips helped um and yeah I will see you guys in another video if you have any questions um please put them down below and I will try to um, answer them as quickly as I possibly can um, so yeah, that's it you guys. Bye. Have a great night.